Hey, thanks for joining me today at Cedar Creek Homestead for this segment of Cattle on the Homestead. And I'm Howie, and sure glad to have you here today with us. Um, wanted to share a little bit with you this week about minerals. Um, do you have a mineral program, a mineral supplementation program for your farm? And if you got cattle, goats, about any kind of animal needs some kind of mineral supplementation. And so I was going to show you a little bit what we do here at Cedar Creek Homestead. If you're new to our homestead, uh, new to this video watching, um, every Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, I am updating or uploading or having a video ready uh, to be aired, a little vlog each week of what's going on here regarding the cattle. Uh, just a cattle only type update. So if you're new, plan on every Thursday evening uh, looking for our videos. You can subscribe. You can also hit the little bell there for notifications so that when we upload a video, you'll get notified. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Also, comment and uh, maybe something you're doing with mineral supplementation. Um, but anyway, if you're new, we certainly appreciate you watching. And if you've been somebody watching me for a little while, uh, we certainly appreciate that too. Appreciate you viewing and uh, watching. Appreciate all the comments and the patience with me. Kind of new to this here YouTube stuff, but I'm going to dedicate one day a week, Thursdays at 7 o'clock, to upload a video of just about cattle, what we do here. So I'm going to call it Cattle on the Homestead on uh, Saturday mornings um, at 7 o'clock on Saturday mornings. I'm planning on uploading a video that would be uh, uh, Cedar Creek Homestead. Uh, this week on the homestead. It'll just be a vlog about what we've done this past week. On Tuesday mornings, is we're going to upload, uh, not Tuesday mornings, but Tuesday evening at 7. And I'm sorry, all of these will be at 7 o'clock p.m. Everything will be in the evening. <laughs> Maybe I can edit this mess up out. But 7 o'clock p.m. Tuesday evening will be coffee time. Just a time that I just yakety yak about whatever I want to talk about regarding homesteading. Then uh, Thursdays will be cattle time. We'll talk about cattle every Thursday evening and show a little video of what's going on regarding the cows here. I have uh, 75 mama cows and two bulls. So I'm not no big time rancher, but I've been at it for quite a while. Really been around cattle my entire lifetime. So, But I'm not saying I know it all, and I'm learning from you folks' videos. So I'm going to share something there. And then Saturdays is going to be uh, this week on the homestead, which Saturday night at 7 will just be a video that's uploaded that's just got what we did this week. It'll just be a short video, but what we done... Uh, probably less than 30 minute video, but just a little bit to go take you out to the garden taking you out to the chickens all that kind of stuff and maybe a little bit even on the cows and just be a montage of whatever and then throughout the week uh, here lately I've been uploading something just about every every day There's so much going on that we've got going on here on the homestead I want to share it with you and I hope it helps somebody and I tell you your videos certainly help me and I appreciate what you all are putting out the ones that put put out videos and then those that don't that just watch uh, it encourages me if you watch the videos but uh, we're a faith-based uh, modern day homesteader and just trying to make a living here on this land but I'm going to get on with today's video before I bore you to death with all the ins and outs uh, I want to talk about mineral supplementation and if you've got cattle or anything you realize that you need to supplement your animals so one way to do that is um, I keep mineral blocks. They're brown blocks that are minerals, and I keep that out year-round. There's all different ways of doing it. But my grandfather uh, farmed this piece of land, ranched it for many, many years, not only here, but he had cattle his entire life pretty much. And he always used range blocks, blocks, and they were successful. They have a mix of, they have different uh, substances in there, like salt and so forth. And most are pre-made for cattle, and that's not any problem. So you don't even have to really worry about that. But you can read the ingredients 
and the biggest one will usually be salt and animals need salt so they'll eat that salt the salt also makes them lick it because they like the salt that flavoring in there makes them lick the block more and they get other things in their system like copper and magnesium or whatever they get different makeups now right now i also have sulfur blocks the reason i have the sulfur blocks is i'd sent my son to go buy salt blocks and he bought 10 sulfur blocks uh he should have known that we always have used the brown mineral blocks but the co-op store they load it in the back of his truck he gets home and he's got 10 sulfur blocks he puts out in the shed i go out to get a mineral block and there they are so I had to send him back to get mineral blocks. But I kept the sulfur blocks. They would have took them back, no problem. Because I knew summertime was coming on. And the old timers used to feed sulfur blocks to help get rid of ticks and flies. I don't know if that really works, but I don't mind trying it. Anything that will work to get rid of ticks and flies. Summertime, the ticks and flies are just horrible. And uh, so anyway, uh, last year, and actually the last five or six years I have put out bagged mineral that has fly control it's Purina wind and rain fly control the only thing is I feel it is pricey for I don't feel I get a lot of results out of it so it, the wind and rain what it's good for you can put it out if it rains on it they'll still eat it it's still good um, it don't hurt it that way also, it has this ingredient in it that passes through the animal into their cow pie, and the flies lay their eggs in there, and it kills the larvae, the fly larvae, the maggots. So you don't get that. The only thing is, I have read that it also, the worms and things that come up and eat that cow pie, that it also harms them. So if you know anything about soil health, you won't red worms you want them worms eating and down in your soil and a good soil so the experts say uh, videos I've watched from OSU and others uh, will say that good soil health when you take a scoop of dirt if it's got red worms in it you've got good soil health some have took cow pies and turned them over and no worms at all when they're feeding wind and rain where you know I don't know if it just happened they picked out some that were bad but it makes sense that it's not it's indiscriminatory it's going to kill everything that eats that so uh, there are other bugs uh, that are healthy for your soil so you know I'm not saying I'm a tree hugger but I am concerned about our environment and I want to do the best I can and also my soil health because if I have healthy soil I'm in the business of growing grass you might say you're in the business of growing cattle but I'm in the business of growing grass so the more grass that I can get on my amount of property, the more cattle I can run per acre, the more profit I'll make, and the better off I'll be. But if it begins to kill out all my grass or it doesn't do as well as it would have, uh, you know, the cow pies are good fertilized. So uh, it's natural. They pass it through, and I usually run something over the property out here and drag those cow pies down at least once a year and it just helps your soil but while it's con uh, decomposing the worms come in there and they compost that and uh, you'll see a big clump of dark dark grass around a cow pie and that's because it's healthy soil so uh, anyway I quit feeding the rain, rain, and, rain and mineral from Purina this year just because um, of the price you can also buy it that has, uh, I believe you call it agromycin, but it's uh, granules in it that will help because in the fall here a few times I have had cows get sick with a disease that's caused from the uh, uh, flies biting. The horse fly will spread it from another cow to another one and they'll bite them and they get it and it's called anaplasmosis. So they get that and they'll end up dying if you don't get to them soon enough. You can give them like LA 300 a good strong dose of that and mine it will get over it. I've been able to save them if I catch them early. If I, you know, they get off in these woods and they don't show up and if you don't count your cattle every day, this time of the year, you know, I got 85 mama cows, two bulls, plus all their babies and it's hard to count all of them when you're running them from one pasture to the other. So one could lag back and have anaplas and uh, I wouldn't catch that. So then by the time you do find her, the crows or buzzards are eating on her 
or she's so far gone it's too late then. But if I get, when they're sick, I'll get up there and give them a shot of LA-300 and that helps. But you can buy this mineral that has that mixed in there. Um, I did last year from our vet, I got a little cheaper deal buying a ton of that from him. So I fed it. And I did not have any cows get sick with anaplas last year. One of the first years not to have any anaplas here on the farm. So I'm thankful for that. You used to could buy a shot and vaccinate your cows too for anaplas. But I did not have any, uh, well, I say that. I did have a cow die, number 22, died right over here to the left of me last year. She was getting to be an older cow, and in August she just come up dead. Now, I hadn't noticed her sick or anything. There's a lot of things could have happened. Someone could have shot her. She could have had ate something that killed her, a million things. Had I seen her earlier, or I could have paid a vet to come out and check her, maybe she had anaplas and died of that. But... Nonetheless, uh, she's a p probability that she was anaplast, so I said I didn't have any last year, but it seemed like I'll get one case at least every fall, and it usually starts around in August, towards the end of August and into September, which starts the fly season, season starts dwindling down, but we start getting these big old horse flies by then. And so this year, I'm trying a different approach. I'm going to spray my cows. I've even thought about putting ear tags in them, but I'm trying to get them up once a week and spray them, and I'm going to see how that works out. Instead of spending a fortune, I spent a lot of money last year. They'll eat a lot of that rain and wind mineral, and I was feeding about a bag a day, and that's uh, $30 a day roughly from our co-op. So, uh, And it's even more expensive if you add in the agrimycin granules that will help control your uh, sicknesses from the program. Of course, if you save a cow, you know, if you save a $1,000, $1,200 cow, I guess you could say it's worth it, but it just seemed like I spent a lot of money. And uh, I believe last year I had figured up that I'd spent about 2500 on uh, wind and rain mineral. And that it seems like a lot of money to spend. And I didn't feel like I got the results. If it, I still had flies, I still had horse flies, um, and I don't have any neighbors close by that have cows. They're probably a mile away from me is the next cattle herd. Uh, I don't know what they feed wind and rain or not. One of them, I believe, does, and, and the other guy back over here doesn't. So they say that affects you. But nonetheless, I uh, thought that wasn't a profitable approach. So uh, I quit doing that. But anyway, I just keep always, even uh, now, when you feed wind and rain, you have to take the range blocks away. But during the winter time, I would feed the regular range blocks. Like I say, my grandpa's done that. One thing range blocks are good for is keeping your cows healthy of things that they miss out. You know, they say most diseases and sicknesses that we have as humans can be related to not having appropriate minerals, something that you're missing in your body. So uh, a lot of people start taking vitamin C and they start doing better. So cattle are pretty much the same way. If they're missing something, it could cause them to throw their calf. It could cause them not to breed back. Uh, they cause them just to not eat well, all kinds of stuff. So to me, if they're fat and they're flourishing and looking good, it's probably because you got a good mineral program. But you got to be consistent year-round. They need minerals. I know you feed maybe supplemental grain. I still keep range blocks out. In every pasture, I try to keep range blocks out. And right now, besides the mineral block, I also am feeding these. I'm about out of them, but these uh, sulfur blocks. So they have a choice. They can eat on the range block or they can eat the sulfur block. The choice is up to them. But you got to have mineral out there. If you don't have it, um, you know, there's Dr. Pole. Maybe you've watched some of his uh, shows. Um, I used to watch him. I haven't. I don't watch much TV anymore, but used to. I would try to watch Dr. Pole on a regular basis. And I remember some farmers having trouble with their cattle rebreeding, and it was because of the lack of mineral. Their mineral program wasn't good. So he would tell them, you know, you got to have a good mineral program. And uh, some of my friends that ranch in the area, they buy it by the ton in bags, and they feed it that way. Um, I just like the blocks. It seems like the blocks do very well. The cows can come by and lick them, and I'll have at least one block in every pasture of mineral so they can come by. And usually it's close to the water source, so when they come to get water, they can lick some mineral, and then they can go back out and eat. Uh, that's how I do mine. There's a guy named Greg Judy. Uh, 
and I can't think of the name of his uh, deal now. He's up in Missouri. He has a trough fixed up that has different little flaps, and the cows can get different ingredients out of that, and it's loose mineral. Like they can get the regular brown type mineral, they can get sulfur, they can get just white salt if they want it. Uh, there's several things in there, I can't remember what all it is he has in there, but he gets that and puts out for his cows and says the cows are smart enough to figure out what they need. I don't know, humans aren't smart enough to figure out what they need, so don't know that cows are either, but that is an option there to feed mineral. Um, a lot of my friends will buy it by the ton and all year long they'll have a mineral trough and they just keep the loose uh, uh, bagged mineral in there. Um, and that would be great. There's nothing wrong with that. I just seem like I like the range blocks. The only thing is mine weigh 50 pounds, so they're a little heavy moving. I put them on the front of my four-wheeler. I take them out close to the trough, and I'll put them out. Now, right here, I'm fixing to show you. I have a trough here, but it is uh, a homemade trough, and I'll take you along and show you that here. This trough, as I step off the four-wheeler here, and take you over to it this was made by my grandfather and uh, so this trough is probably well at least 50 years old uh, maybe more like 70 year old but he made this trough you could put the mineral in it and he had a pipe in it so the water would drain now that old pipe is just about gone and this old trough is busted loose and stuff's beginning to happen, but I'm kind of just uh, partial to it. Now you can see because it's got a broke in, the sulfur block has come out here. And once again, the reason I'm feeding the sulfur really is because I got them. But a lot of the old timers around here swear by a sulfur block. And uh, Grandpa had a shed actually built here. And the animals could step into this covered area and he'd put the salt down here on this thing. And if it did get rain in it, it could drain out. He could even feed if he wanted to. He could put feed in there and feed the animals. But um, anyway, this used to have more concrete here. It's just a homemade thing. Uh, he probably mixed it in a wheelbarrow and made this. But... Uh, I'm just kind of partial to it uh, after all these years it's still standing here but sulfur block getting back to that the old timers say that if you let your cows drink sulfur water we have wells here that put out sulfur water we don't drink that water but we could you can drink it it won't kill you or nothing but it stinks real bad and once you get used to it, it ain't a problem but uh, we had uh, a lot of people around here used to have sulfur wells and you'd go to their home and drink their tea and stuff and they'd have sulfur so Anyway, feeding that to them uh, gets in the cow's system and makes the ticks and stuff not want to uh, uh, stick to them. And farmers used to say when they had sulfur wells, they never had to worry about mosquitoes bothering them or uh, uh, stuff like that. But most of those farmers are dead now, so I don't know how healthy that is. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, but the reason they're dead is because they would be a hundred years or more now if they were still living. I'm just joking about that. But anyway, uh, the sulfur water here, they say you can put it on your garden vegetables, especially tomatoes, and water them with sulfur water, and it does really well, um, the old-timers say. But they used to feed these in the summer, and they say it would help. So this year, I'm giving them a choice during the summer, and I may buy some more. I've got a couple still in the shed that the uh, new ones but once I get done and I buy more mineral block I may buy several of these to keep it out all summer long just as an experiment and just do my own research and see if it helps or not but uh, now the cows seem to prefer the brown mineral blocks uh, they'll eat two of them to one of these sulfur blocks so they may not get enough of the sulfur in their system to help them but I don't want to feed sulfur alone because I believe they need this what's in this uh, um, block here so uh and since they eat it more i feel like they it must taste better or they like it better or whatever i never much cared for sulfur water but anyway that's what we're doing out here at the homestead i got different troughs made in different pastures but this pasture here we actually call the hog pasture and uh my grandfather uh had a fence uh, across up here and where this pond is it went back through there a what we call a hog wire fence some call it field fencing but he had a hog wire fence that ran up through here 
and there's 10 acres here back uh, kind of draw a line through here but you could rectangle shape 10 acres that he bought and added to his homestead many many years ago 70 plus years ago and he called it the hog pasture and he started clearing the woods out and let his pigs run and he dug this pond here with a horse and a uh, slip if you know what I'm talking about it's a deal you can pull we did still have it here on the farm if I can find it sometime I'll show you a video it's old and you couldn't really use it anymore but he used a horse and mule and would dig this pond out and made this here pond now we've worked on it some over the years and put um, you know, dug it out and done things. Now it's still looking pretty poor now, but his pigs would get in that pond for water and to cool off, and he would raise a herd of pigs here. They used to kill uh, 10 or 12 pigs in October. Um, there's uh, an old tree back over here, back behind this stuff. Sometime I'll try to do a video on it, but if you're interested, but it used to have a chain that was grown up in the tree limb, and that's where they killed the hogs, and they would kill them. My grandpa's old home place set right over here. There's a cellar right behind this tree right here, still remnants of the old home place, but on a Saturday, all the neighbors would come out, and it was a Saturday in October, and they would get cool weather, and they would butcher hogs, and he had an old smokehouse out behind here, and like I say, one day I'm going to do a complete log on just that but anyway uh, he uh, um, they would butcher all those pigs and that's what they lived on they had a little house out here a smoke house that the pork stayed in they salted it down and they smoked some of it and did different things and they didn't have refrigeration so they would raise their pigs there and all the neighbors would come around and different people and they'd have a whole herd of people here just to butcher hogs and then maybe the next Saturday he would go help whoever and people just did that through October and November the neighbors all helped each other uh, kill hogs and that's how you survived meat for the winter but anyway that's a little side cattle operation but just to show you that's what this pasture used to be and look at it now uh, up through here this is beautiful uh, green uh, pasture all I mean, in behind them trees, there's a little ditch right there with trees still yet in it to keep it from eroding. But that tr ditch is filled in over the years, and I could probably get rid of the trees and uh, uh, clean that out. But I just like it the way it is. It reminds me of when I was a boy coming up here. And uh, just some of it, this old pond, it could use some work, but it kind of looks like it did when I was a boy, and I just kind of like it all. But anyway, hey, I appreciate you uh, watching. Once again, if, if you haven't done it, uh, every Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m., we'll be updating, putting a video up that's just about cattle and a cattle update of what we're doing here on Cedar Creek Homestead. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Comment. Let me know what kind of mineral program you're doing, what kind of ideas you may have on your pro farm. And uh, if you haven't, if you'd subscribe, we'd certainly appreciate your subscription. Here to Cedar Creek Homestead. We have something all through the week, things going on, gardening, a whole variety of subjects. But Thursday night, it's left up just to plain old cattle. I love raising cattle. Uh, my goal is to eventually raise cattle full time. Uh, but right now, they don't make me enough money to do that, but they do make me some money. I, I am profitable on my cattle. I wouldn't do it, I don't think, if I wasn't profitable, or at least I wouldn't do this much work if I wasn't profitable on it. Uh, but the whole idea is to make a little profit, but I take my profit and I turn back into what I've got. I don't frivolously blow it. I buy better equipment, fencing, whatever, buy better feed, more quality, whatever for my cattle, better bulls, but I spend it back on the farm, but I do make a profit. Um, one of these days when I retire, I may have to live off of the cattle income is one of my thoughts. But anyway, hey, appreciate you watching this week. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. This is Howie with Cedar Creek Homestead. We're signing off. We're gone.